So today, we're going to talk about a Death Shroud build that I've been working on, and this is going to be a two-video thing. The first, I'm going to be going over the build I've made, and the second, I'm going to be going over a kind of more flexible version of the build, because this all started, I was playing with my Siphon Tank, which I have a link to in my channel, it's not updated for the April content patch, but I was using that and I wanted a more tanky build, so I started working with this Death Shroud mechanic, because I was thinking to myself, you know, you can regenerate your Death Shroud fairly quickly, so if I can maximize on that mechanic, I can give myself a lot of health regeneration through Death Shroud. But as I was messing with it, I found just how kind of flexible Death Shroud builds can be. And it's a preference thing, some people don't like the Death Shroud mechanic as much, but if you've been kind of thinking about trying to make a Death Shroud build work, these videos are going to kind of talk about that and how Death Shroud can really be used in any situation, whether it's condition damage, regular damage, survivability, and everything in between. So we're just going to talk about this build first. This build is a more survivable side, but it still does a lot of damage. The way it works is it mostly capitalizes on stacking vulnerability and stacking might on you so that your power can get up to the high thousand, not high thousands, but pretty high up there. And then with the vulnerability stacking you'll be doing on them, the damage is quite impressive for a build that's meant to be tanky. It's not, obviously necromancers aren't known for high, high damage. And this build especially isn't a high, high damage build, but for the goal of being a mostly survivable build, it does do quite a bit of damage as opposed to some other more tanky builds. So we're gonna get right into it here. Now the first thing I'm gonna talk about is simply gear. With this build, gear is not a major issue. You know, a lot of builds kind of require, or not really require, but recommend, oh, you should use this armor, oh, you should use this armor. And it's not really necessary with this build, at least in my run-throughs with it. Of course, my builds, I like building based on what I like to do versus what people think I should do. So the armor I'm using right now, if we go into my equipment, it's power, toughness, and vitality. Most of it's exotic. I do have ascended gear on my accessories. But it's mostly power, toughness, and vitality. I do have brawler runes to increase that and also give me the might stacking on my heal, which, again, goes with the theme of might stacking that I use in the build. But I've run... I have a set of Berserker's gear in my bank, and I've run with this Berserker's gear, and it still is just as effective to have the Berserker's gear. It's a little more damage as opposed to survivability, but, again... It's a large, it's a preference thing. Because Death Shroud is something that you're only really going to do if you're looking for a build that's fun or something you want to do. If you're trying to get a build that's like the top of the line, you're going to go with either something like my Siphon Tank build, which maximizes well on tankiness or a condition or pure damage build that maximizes their damage with Berserker gear. And... I don't like builds like that, I don't like to just do things because they're the most effective. Though I do try to maximize the effectivity of my builds, I want something fun and that I'm not going to sit there drooling while I'm playing the game like, what the hell, this is boring. I want something that's fun to play and I've always liked the Death Shroud mechanic and I wanted to find a way to make it work. So gearing, really not that important, but I, w I would personally recommend you either stick with Power Toughness Vitality or the Berserker's gear just because... It's, I just find those two to be the best. Again, it's a preference thing, so you got to do what you think is best. If you like higher damage, but you want a little more survivability, maybe something with power, precision, and toughness, or whatever you're going for. Again, we'll talk about the flexibility of the build in the second video. Right now, we're just going to go focus on this one, and we'll go to the skills I use next. So let's go over the skills really quickly. The skills is one area that doesn't change very much throughout the different fl types of the death shroud build you can do that we'll talk about in the second video. Um, my main hand is axe focus. 
for a necromancer, I almost always recommend using the focus at some point because the regeneration, vulnerability, life force, and the damage, it's its a Reaper's Touch is just a really, really good ability that can be used in pretty much every build, except maybe condition damage builds would, would rather have something else, but 99% of the time you're going to want this somewhere. And the Boon Rip and Chill is nice too, but let's be real, people use the focus because of the Reaper's Touch. Now I use an axe because though the vulnerability is nice from the auto attack, I spend most of my time in Death Shroud, so that's not really that important, and plus, you know, you can only get up to say, I want to say 14 or 15 stacks of vulnerability, because they start wearing off after that, but the main reason I use an axe is for Ghastly Claws, because it does do good damage, but that 12% life force addition is critical to aiding in regaining your, life, your Death Shroud ability when you're not in it. So, that's why I use those two. I would highly recommend you do that if you're going to stick with a Death Shroud build. The offhand, I use a staff. The offhand is totally interchangeable, to be honest. Some people s like to keep an axe and maybe use a Warhorn. Some people like daggers for the extra damage. I just like a staff. The extra range, the 1200 range, when I can't be in Death Shroud is great. And the AoEs have saved me... A gajillion times so I I'm personally sticking with the staff but that is not a key thing to the death shroud build that I have axe and focus kind of key things offhand can be whatever your heart desires for the other five skills I interchange them a lot and I'm gonna talk about this briefly one thing a lot of people have in their minds is this idea that once they have a skill here, they have to stick with those five skills. Like, there's not this little button right here that allows you to switch it whenever you want outside of combat. They just have to stick with those five. You shouldn't do that. It's not going to kill you, but you really should get in the habit of learning the fights and switching your builds skills whenever you need to. So, for my build... I usually am on Consume Condition. I I personally like Well of Blood better. The problem is if you can't stay in the AoE because of whether it's an AoE they drop on you or whatever reason, this is not worth it because the initial self-heals are the same and if you can't stay in the well for the extra health per second, you'd rather you should probably have Consume Condition. So if you're not if you know you're in a fight that you're not going to be moving around a lot, use Well of Blood otherwise stick with Consume Conditions. For this build, those are really the best two that I use. I've never really experimented with the other ones as much, but those two are really the ones I would say are the best. For my utilities, I always keep Spectral Armor on because the protection is nice, the life force, you gain a lot of life force from taking damage with this on, and it's a stun breaker which has saved me a lot of times to get knocked down and get back up quickly in order to say get into Death Shroud because my health is dropping too fast. So. Even if you change out the other skills, I would stick with Spectral Armor. That's my personal thought. I also use Well of Suffering and Blood is Power a lot. Well of Suffering is a nice AoE and that vulnerability synergizes well with the rest of the build. Blood is Power is just nice because again, the Might Stacking synergizes with the rest of the build. And because it's 10 Might Stacks, 10 is a lot of Might Stacks. If you combine this with the Might you get from the other source in this build, you can get to 25 stacks of might pretty easily, which gives you a, over 700 extra power, which added on to what I have, puts you around 3200 power, which for mostly exotic gear isn't that bad. Other things I'll use, I'll use the Well of Power if I need another Stun Breaker and if I need to remove my conditions quickly. Most of the others I don't use a lot. I'll use Signet of the Locust if I'm running around. I might use Signet of Spite for extra power. Well of Darkness I've used before in, a, in situations where I need to blind a lot of foes really fast. Most of the others I don't use a lot. I mean, I've experimented with Signet of Undeath, but it only generates one life force percentage per three seconds, which is really slow. And the active spell, though nice, only revives three downed allies, and it takes quite a bit of time to cast, so I don't really like it that much. Again, preference stuff. For my elite skill, I switch between the Hounds of Balthazar, Lich Form, and Plague Form. 
Hounds of Balthazar is only a human skill, but you can summon them, they go fight, and then you switch into Death Shroud and they're still fighting. Most of these other elite skills can't be used while you're in Death Shroud, that's why I like that one. Lich Form, I will use if I need to stay really far back, if I need extra damage outside of Death Shroud from a far away position. I like Lich Form, or if it's single target damage, I'll use Lich Form. And obviously Plague Form if I'm underwater, or if I need to do a lot of AoE damage or blinding. Plague Form is really nice, especially since it increases your health immensely. And of course, both of them grant you stability while you're in that mode, so you don't have to worry about getting knocked down. So, I can't go into Death Shroud right now, my Death Shroud's not high enough, but most of you should know the Death Shroud builds, I mean, wow, Death Shroud skills pretty efficiently because all Necromancer builds will use Death Shroud at some point, regardless of whether they focus on Death Shroud. So, the next thing we're going to focus on is, of course, the traits. So now we're going to look at the traits. The traits is the main section in the second video where... The flexibility of the Death Shroud build can really be looked at, but for now we're just going to focus on what I've worked out, and again, this isn't the most efficient build, I'm going to say that right now. There are still things I might tweak, but for now it's working pretty well, and I don't really feel like fixing what's not broken, so I'm just going to show you what I did, and then in the second video we'll talk about all the different flexibilities, versions, avenues you can take with the Death Shroud build. So first off... We have Parasitic Bond, which gives you the 1,000 health every time you kill a, an enemy. And for an Adept Spite, I use Life Blast and Plague Blast Grant Might, the Reaper's Might trait, which this is where most of our Might stacking comes from with the 19 and a half seconds on your Might, and the interval of your auto attack is one second. You can gain about 20 stacks of Might on top of the 10 you gain from Blood is Power. I'm pretty sure Might caps at 25, but that gives you a lot of Might. And I don't know if this accounts for the boon duration increase from your Death Magic tree, but a lot of Might and a lot of time, which gives you a substantial amount of damage increase for a survivable build. Next, I have my Death Magic capped out. For static abilities, we have Armored Shroud, which increases your toughness by about 200 while you're in Death Shroud. Soul Comprehension increases how much life force you generate when enemies die around you. And then, the third static ability, and the main reason I've capped out Death Magic, is because of Deadly Strength. You gain power based on your toughness, which for me, my power outside of Death's Route is about 2,000. So that gives me, or sorry, tw yeah, 2,000 toughness, which gives me a little over 200 power, which is the amount I would gain by maxing out the spite tree. Now obviously with the spite tree there are other things in there that will give you more damage but I like the survivability avenue better because you can't always dodge everything and keep an eye on what's going on. You know we have a world going on around the laptop or a computer and you can't always be paying attention to what you're doing and having that extra survivability can come in a lot of handy. For my adept trait I use shrouded removal which you lose a condition when you enter death shroud. So say you use well as blood to or blood is power, you use that to get your might stacks, you get, you get hit with yourself bleeding, go into death shroud, that gets nullified. So, I always use blood is power right before I go into death shroud because the might stacking can start getting really heavy at that point. It's not a major ability, you can change it out with something else, sometimes I've used staff mastery just for the recharge on my staff skills, but I don't use my staff a lot, so I stick with shroud removal for the most part. My master ability is Death Shiver, which grants vulnerability per second. Um, it's three vulnerability for three seconds in a radius of 360 on five targets. So you have to be pretty close for it to work. But again, it works well with that vulnerability stacking idea. There are, you could do greater marks if you're using the staff. Um, there's not tons of other things you can use with the Death Shroud build per se, but because I'm trying to I wanted to cap out my toughness, that was just the best thing I could have picked, and it does work well with the vulnerability stacking you're going for for the damage aspect. For my Grandmaster, and another reason I really like the capped out Death Magic Tree, I use Unholy Sanctuary, which regenerates about 130 health per second while you're in Death Shroud. 
and a lot of people don't find this necessary because say you're in death's route for 30 seconds you get about 3,000 health that's a hefty chunk but it's not oodles and oodles and some people don't think it's worth the grand master trait spot I just like it because it increases my survivability and again I like having that survivable aspect to my character so that's why I keep that as that and for other grandmaster skills there's I don't think there's really a ton for you to use with a death route build you can obviously do different things but I personally just like unholy sanctuary for that ability to gain health back um my last six go into soul reaping just because it's a death shroud build does not mean you have to have a capped out soul reaping tree i've constantly thought about switching out these last two for maybe a boost in power or blood magic or curses but for now i'm sticking with this and this is what i'm going to show you guys because even though it may not be the maximum efficiency it works well and from this this is a good kind of blueprint for you to manipulate and find out what you like because i don't post these so you can just copy and paste them though you can do that if you want these mainly just serve as kind of like a starting point for you to kind of make your own build from. So this is how I'm keeping it for this video. For our static abilities, we gain increased life force from our skills like our Ghastly Claws and our Spectral Armor. We then have Last Gasp, which gives you Spectral Armor at 50% health. And again, like I was saying earlier, Spectral Armor is a beautiful ability to have, so this is a very nice static ability. The fifth one, Strength of the Undeath, gives you a 5% damage increase when your life force is above the halfway point. Not major, nice damage boost, but again, like I've said, this last third of the tree isn't all really crucial, though it does serve its purpose well. For the static abilities, I use Vital Persistence, which I feel is almost mandatory because it slows down your Death Shroud rate of dropping your degeneration decrease by 50%. So you can stay in Death Shroud a lot longer, you can regenerate life a lot longer, you can stack might and vulnerability a lot longer. Um, the, and then the second one is also a blue ability, it's Unyielding Blast, which grants vulnerability every time you strike something with your life blast. So your auto attack gives two stacks of vulnerability per second and one stack of might per second, so the damage just keeps rolling up. I've thought about switching these out. The one other one I might use is uh, not maybe Spectral Mastery, reduce the recharge on my Spectral Armor. Would be nice, but mainly Path of Midnight, reducing the recharge on my Death Shroud skills by 15% could be a nice touch. Something I'm experimenting with, but we'll see. For my Grandmaster skill, I use Death Perception, which increases your critical hit chance while you're in Death Shroud. Decent damage boost, works a little better with the Berserker's gear, but... Gaining stability is also nice if you need it. And then, if you really want to get technical, Renewing Blast could be really useful. To heal someone for 340 every time your ally gets hit isn't a bad ability, but that requires positioning yourself with your ally between you and your enemy. And since most people are constantly moving, it's not really worth it, in my opinion. But again, preference thing. That's up to you more than anything else so next I'm gonna go find an area and I'm gonna kind of show how the build works so we'll be right back with that so here we're coming up on champion ice brood Norn and we're gonna show off the build first thing I want to do is Reaper's Mark to get the vulnerability started ghastly cause to get up my life force start going to town. My life force is pretty high, so I'm going to hit with well of uh, blood is power and then go straight into my death shroud. Use 5 and 3 since they're instant abilities. Use 4 to gain some death shroud back. And then I'm just going to start auto attacking and keeping out of the way. As I auto attack, his vulnerability will go up. My might stacks will go up. I'm at 17. I'm at 20 now. 21. I should probably hit 25 if I keep going here. And as you can see, if I go into here, my power is at 3,500, just about. Once I get to about 5,000 Death Shroud, I'll switch out, because I want to start charging up again, and just in case I need the extra buffer while I'm gaining my Death Shroud back up, I like to have it. So we'll just keep going, gaining some Death Shroud. Use my Hounds of Balthazar here. Keep gaining Death Shroud. As you can see, my health's not... I'm not being targeted, but my health isn't doing too bad. 
and pretty sure this guy's gonna go down before I activate Death Shroud again, but there we go. That's kind of the build in action. You have to test out for yourself to see if it's something you would want to do, but for now, that's it. I'm gonna start up another video just to talk about the flexibility of the build. There won't really be any major build footage of those unless it's asked for so if you want to stay tuned go to that video otherwise you know have fun with your death Row build please like and subscribe and all that stuff this guy thinks it's splendid so i will see you on that video